Okay guys, so thank you for watching. Today we have a very special uh, video for you. It's gonna be your first ever gas technique here on the channel. Uh, not just some guests, we have a very special guest today. It's Wim de Putter from Brassa. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Very uh, good for having you. It's uh, actually a huge honor for me. Uh, Wim is going to show us some very nice uh, techniques. I'm not going to say what it is, you're going to find out in a minute, and let's get to it. Okay, so look. I know Tom is a specialist in uh, leg locks, so I want to share my variation that I like to do in the honey hole or 411, however you call it. I will first start with an entry, so we'll go over here, please. I've always been a favorite, my favorite has always been a half guard. Put your knee on the floor, please. On the, on the floor, between my legs, yeah, exactly. So, all I can do in the beginning is look for the, the inside grip on the leg. Now there's a whole game and setup over here, but I want to get into the, the honey hole, so that's my main goal right now. So when I'm here, see, I always have to push the person away a little bit. See, if he pushes back, see, I will bring him in and I already put my hand underneath his armpit. So I push, I bring him in, see, load, see, and as I go, I will shift him away to the other side. Now he might fall, but most likely he was just posed on the floor, see, and I will push him away and he will put his foot on the floor, see here. Now I could go enter for an X guard. What I prefer to do here is to keep pushing and I wait, see, here. If the person starts to turn away, see, as I go, see, I put my foot on the hip, see, put my foot in the butt. If he spins again, I end up in the honey hole. Now, you would say, why would he spin? There's also the options of X guard, there's many more options, but this one I get, well, I get often that I start to run, that I start to uh, uh, roll, roll away, jump away, and I get into this one. So I will go all the time over this. So my main game is actually playing deep half guard and those things but over the years people start to to find counters with and then they know what to expect so this is a good switch for me to use so you push him away see as he pushes back you bring him in see you shift him away you use your knee and the inside of his thigh steer him away from, from the center you keep here always important to keep the base here and you could follow up with a push the regular X guard see but in this case what I do is as you push I start to turn away see and now from here, see, as he rolls, I step over step into the honey hole. Now you might say, why would you turn? Well, play with it. Trust me, it happens. <laughs> so once we're in honey hole, of course, we have the heel looks and all those things. But those material out there, I'm just going to show my favorite variation. So the problem is always, if I just attack the heel, see, uh, I can get it, but he has this leg to free himself. So this is the leg I need to finish, and it's the leg he will use to finish. I need to control both legs. So I go for that. And my preferred grip to go for, see, is to go in for the, for the double one. Now, yeah. very often, look, the problem is this, look, imagine I get the second leg and I pull it in. See, the moment I go here, my preferred grip is to go here, but the moment I go, the, they can actually pull their leg out. Yeah. This leg out. See, so go again. See, as you feel, so as I'm here, see, I pull the leg in. And as I go, see, that's when I can strip the leg out. So. The person needs to be wary about it, he needs to be like proficient in leg lock defense, but it happens all the time. So what I started doing now was to capture the foot alone, see, and I got, started taking this foot first. Now, how will I attack it? Look, the same thing I believe, because you always think that my hips, my core, and my arms should work in the same way. So if I start to pull his leg away, see, but at the same time my legs are pushing, I believe they don't work together. And also if I start to pull, see, Tom can start lifting his hip up, see, and I might be able to finish it, but very hard. So, once again, ah, another detail is always I like to hide this foot. I don't like to put my foot on top yet, as I can attack my foot as well, or even cross it all the way through, and then uh, that is a, yeah, a counter here. Look. So I prefer to keep my foot hidden here, or either here, or sometimes even here. It depends later on the technique. In the beginning, I like to cross my feet. Now, as I'm here, I don't like to push. See? I like to do it by put the person as with his leg. Look, Put your, put your toes up, please. Okay. If the toes are pointing up, so always in direction, so the toes are always pointing in the same direction as the knee. Yeah. If you point the feet open, then the kneecap will also turn. Now the Achilles lock always goes in the direction of the toes. If, he, if his foot is up, my, my pressure needs to go straight up. 
if his uh, toes point backwards, and this, my press needs to go backwards. If his toes point away, see, I have to my press in the same direction as the toes, and so on. If we turn his toes in, see, and it has to go this way. And always being, well, I, I'll go over those details later, but initially, it depends on what he's also doing with his foot. If he completely stretches his toes, see, then indeed, see, I can go for straight back on, and in this case, I would need to stop him from going in. Yeah. But, as I said, this one is always a risk, so I don't like to attack the straight one. Now, point your toes, please. So, initially, many people will start pointing their toes like, like, like he's yeah, doing like the leg. leg. Yeah, and there's another detail, see, bend your knee, please. These things can happen. Imagine he's bending his knee and bending his foot. Instead of pulling, see, I will start to push. So initially, I will get a grip behind the calf, see, and get my arm as far as, as close as possible towards the heel, get my hand high on top of my, my, uh, my chest, and I will start doing like a model on. Yeah. This will not be the finish, because Stu can easily stretch his leg, see, and point his toes, point your toes, and now I cannot really finish it with this one anymore. But let's start with the initial thing. His knee goes that way, so I'm going to follow it. I'm going to be super tight, see, arch my back and start pushing in. Now, will this finish it? No. But it will put some pressure on the leg. See? Now, so try to stand up here. See? That should be quite hard for you to do. Yeah. Now, what will happen here? A few things can happen. Tung can rotate and can stretch his leg. Imagine he stretches his leg. The moment he stretches, see, even if you keep your toe not bent, yeah, your toes bent, see, from here, keep it bent. Okay? From here, I can start with my weight backwards to start Stretching that foot. Yes? Correct, right? Now, over here. So go back, please. This is not my favorite attack yet. Because I can also take my arms and again, they can do a lot of things. So as I'm tight, see, the knee goes in. See, I want to. The knee goes in. See, I want to tighten my back, see, and push forward. See? And from here, as he pushes away, see, and start to stretch his foot, see, I can bring it back. Now, I could go for the foot loop, but what I prefer to do this foot is to grab, see, and go behind. And then I have my favorite hold. Yeah. Now for here, I know all of the high level guys, so like, this is one of my main specialty. It's just like the one version that I like this one. So again, every single time I'll go attack like the heel, I have to release this leg. So my idea is not to go for the heel. I yeah. want to have control over both legs. Yeah. And, and the heel look, the same thing looks. It always depends. If you bend the, the leg at this point, see, I can just, I always have to super, get my arms super tight first. So one, so we fix your weak links first, you get your, your the weak links in the chain, so arms tight first, then engage the back, and he's here, so I'm gonna look away, see, and I'm gonna put tension. See, that's yeah. one. And I can also lose from laying backwards, but the moment I lay backwards, Tung can also start raising his hip. And I always believe in Jiu Jitsu, you should try to be one on top, yeah. as much as possible. So, you bend your leg, see, I will get tight, and put my connection here, look away, and it's my core that finishes. Yeah. If you look at it, if you return to the other side, see, the same thing would still apply. Because the lock is the knees pointing in the same direction. Now what will happen often? See? Two will start rotating see, and it will fall great. So now I'm gonna talk about this leg, I will change the angle in a minute. Two can stretch his leg and point his toes and he can bend his leg. Exactly. So initially, if the leg is if the leg, leg is bent, they bend your leg. See? Then the lock goes to that side. So in this case, I will catch, see, super tight. Then now it's again dangerous, so I'll put away, see. And now in this case, my foot is behind my heel, I will look away, see, put pressure on my foot, put pressure on the arm, and now heels to my butt and look away. Now, Tung can roll away if I do this one. And if you keep spinning, then it will keep spinning forever. And end up over here. I might still be able to finish, but it's more tricky. Go back, please. So, this foot, so the moment I, Tom starts to roll on the way, I will step over here. See, and now I can stop his rotation. So if you rotate away, I rotate backwards, and I can stop the rotation and finish from here. Now, of course, Tom can also come back in this case, see, and I have to get my foot out. And you can very easily protect this foot lock. You just have to stretch your leg. Stretch yeah. your leg. See, now there's no foot lock. And then we go for a knee bar. And this is the one. I rarely ever sit out, so from here I keep tight again. So I'm gonna take this leg. The first the foot lock was on the top leg, yeah. now the knee bar is on this leg. What I'm gonna do, I keep my connection, hands together, put pressure on the elbow, pressure on the other elbow, yeah. pause my foot, do the Hawkins, and then from here I put the pressure and I start searching my leg. Will this ever work? Never. Because Tung will bend his knee again and start rolling away, and that's when I step over and the second time you get the finish. 
That's usually how the order is. Very nice. Let's see the entry one more time. From, from, it's also from the other side. So uh, yeah. let's, let's start the entry from here and then we arrive over there. So once again, I'm here. I push, bring in, see, roll away. I push away, start getting up. He starts to roll away, so turn away, not a super fall, step over and bring him in over nice. here. Let's change to the camera, put your head over here. So again, I'm in honey hole. I want to have the both legs, but when I go for the second grip, he pulls his leg always out. So in this case, I will get a grip. Initially, I can even say this is in the middle. I catch the leg here, see, his leg is bent. So I'm gonna get it tight, like a matalel, push forward. Not pull backwards, but really like I can drive myself up. This will all be enough to finish, but it creates some discomfort. From here, if he stretches his leg, he continue my attack. I'll use my right arm to grab like the calf, and it's a moment I can start grabbing both legs. So now, I'm in control if I play it safe. I always like this side better. So if I'm on this side, I just keep the control, it should be very hard for him to get out. Yeah. If I step over, he can counter attack. So I prefer to keep my foot hidden or on top. Initially, hidden is safer. The first attack I have, the leg is slightly bent, then I'm gonna pull my elbows to my hip, see? Sorry, my, my elbows in, get it very tight, put pressure on my inside arm, and, and put rotation, see I'm doing like a steering wheel. So the, the grips lead the hips, so my arms goes first, and now my body goes. And, I, and then he turns, rotates, see, I step over. And the first one usually gets counted because he will stretch his leg, see? And now, if this one doesn't work anymore because the, the, the Achilles yeah. moved, but now I can pull it in, look away, see, put pressure on my leg, and this foot needs to be posted away, and now I have more pressure. Yeah, it's a pressure. And to stretch this yeah. one, and then I take the top leg. Yeah. So, in theory, this should be, I don't know what the IBGF rules say now, but it's, it's only here. It, it should be allowed, but yeah. I don't know if it's going to be wrong, because I always think, yeah, it, it's the weirder rules there, so I do one. Now this one will never work because he will rotate away again, bent, and the second one at the finish. And should he take his leg out, see, at some point, then you still have the heel look if you would like. But I find it more and more hard these days to finish heel looks because people know the defense and clutch control, I believe. So awesome, the very nice and neat. We actually covered this, uh, uh, we call it the Texas Cloverleaf in the I DVD Leg Looks a lot. <laughs> no, 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 we had some very nice details because uh, we just covered the position and I also thought it's very very cool because uh, uh, Wim and I haven't talked in depth about the DVD but we're on the same level considering position and control over diving into the, the inside heel hook uh, so that's amazing I also like, like using the we call it the Texas Club leaf with the, the, the mm -hmm. going for two legs and the uh, Achilles lock so uh, after this uh, video I'm going to show you my favorite uh, things on the, on the position and I really love the entry uh, Wim uses a lot of uh, half guard. I actually stole some things from him from the half guard. He, uh, he has some cool stuff. Uh, also, when people go under for the dog fight, uh, so, so they go up and they, they get up, boom, he has some cool stuff with darses here. Then he counters it with, with rolls. He has some really cool game on this, on this position. Um, so, I highly recommend you check that out. He has a lot of free videos on it on his YouTube, right? Yes. And he also mentions during the techniques some concepts. So he mentions the Baby Bridge and the Hawkins. That's from his DVDs, The Memory Principle, uh, and some other DVDs he has on BGA Phonetics. Really cool stuff. And really like how it translates, not only in uh, his game, the things uh, we've been doing with his DVD, but also into what I like to do with the leg locks. Everything is connected. Baby Bridges, Hawkins from everywhere. So uh, I really like the details. Thank you very much, Wim. Thank you too. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you.